Hi there, my name is Peter Enrico of Enterprise Performance Strategies and I want to once again thank you for joining me to learn more about mainframe performance fundamentals and concepts. In this video I will continue my discussion about the key ZOS performance indicator known as the ZOS Workload Manager Performance Index. Now this video is actually part two of a two-part series and in this video I want to explain how to read a performance index report how to evaluate patterns of activity, and how to use the performance index in your installation. Hi everybody, my name is Peter Enrico with Enterprise Performance Strategies and I'm co-creator of Pivotor. My team and I are here to help you get great workload performance while optimizing the usage of your system resources in the mainframe environment. Our education and our software are geared towards helping you get better performance results and faster. Now if you're new here, click the subscribe button and any of the references I give in this video, I'll link in the references below. So let's get into it. So what we're going to do during this video is I'm going to show you some report examples of looking at the ZOS Workload Manager Performance Index measurement. Hopefully you've seen my previous video on this subject where I've gone through the concept of the performance index as well as the formula for performance index and help you understand what a good value is and what a bad value is. And as I said in this video we're going to be doing reporting. But just as a quick recap, as a reminder what the performance index is is an indicator of how well the goal for a workload manager workload, how well the goal was met or how poorly the goal was missed. And it's used by you, the workload manager administrator, the performance administrator, as well as the ZOS workload manager itself to better understand how easy the goal is, how hard the goal is, how the goal is actually um, being achieved. But what's also interesting about the performance index is that we can have unlike workloads with unlike goals and we can actually compare how those two workloads are doing against each other for evaluation purposes. So perhaps WLM can help this workload by stealing resources from this other workload and the way WLM makes that decision is, well it does a lot of things to make that decision, but using the performance index is a key, probably the key indicator at a period or a point of input to help make that decision. So that's why it's important for you to understand as well because you're going to use the performance index to tune your goal values. So let's look at some reports now. What we're looking at here on the screen is an example of a heat chart that is for performance indexes, the workload manager performance indexes. And this one's based off of the SMF 72 record that we talked about earlier. What we're looking at here is as follows. If you look at the x-axis down here, we see that this is for 24 hours worth of data because we have the date and time of the measurements. On the y-axis, what we have is sorted by WLM importance level, we have each WLM service class period that is defined to the WLM service definition. Um, this is the service class periods that we see sorted from the most important at the bottom to the least important at the top. Now, each one of the cells of this particular chart indicates a period of time, the performance index for a period of time for that particular service class period. What do these different colors mean? Well, look at the legend up at the top here, and we see that we have several colors. The very first color is this grayish color, which says that we have values of, or performance index values of zero, which basically means the work was not running during that period of time. So it's interesting only get, we get to see which service class periods we have no work running for them. The next one down is 0.81 or less than or equal to 0.81. I have a color indicator of light blue here and that shows us work that has easily met its goal value. It always achieved its goal value. Why 0.81? Well, if you watched my previous video on this subject, I mentioned that 0.81 is a magic number in Workload Manager. What it means is that the goal was always being met. Now, didn't I say in the last video that anything with a PI of less than 1 means the goal is being met? And the answer is yes. So what's so special about 0.81? 0 0.81 0 is, a, is a value used by Workload Manager to decide whether or not work should be helped or just not helped. Or another way of putting it is, if a 
Workload has a performance index of less than 1 but greater than 0.81, WLM may still help it because its attitude is, oh look, it's meeting its goal, I think I can do better. But 0.81, WLM is going to look at and say, look, it is doing so good, I'm not going to help it. So WM leaves it alone. Now, it's going to look at it on a regular basis, but it leaves it alone. So think about 0.81 as being the magic number that if you see that you always have a PI of 0.81 or less, know that WM is never going to help that workload. And you may want to make the goal a little bit more difficult so that at least WM pays attention to it. Now, it could be that the work is achieving its goal, you're happy with the goal value, and so you leave it there as long as it's meeting the goal, that's all you care about. But do understand that if something is regularly missing or meeting its goal and doing so much better than its goal, that it could be something that's very vulnerable for WLM to steal from. But let's take a look at that. The next three colors are 1.1, 1.4, and 1.99, the green, the yellow, and the orange. That means the goal is being basically met or missed by a little bit. And then finally, we have the red color, which says severe. The goal is being missed by twice as much or more. Why twice as much? My attitude is if you regularly have PIs of greater than two, pay attention to it because it means that either the work isn't doing too well or the goal is too difficult. So how do you evaluate this heat chart? Well, first thing you want to do is, of course, we have flyover. So I'm going to pick flyover for this STC high here. And you see we put up a little post-it. And the way you read it is it says that this is for importance level 2, STC high, and it achieved the PI on the first line says 0.66. So now we know that this goal was met and was met easily. Uh, the date and time of the measurement is the next line down with the measurement interval of 900 seconds, which is the next line after that. What is the goal value? Well, we see at the bottom line that it says velocity. And it see, we see that the velocity goal value is 60. So now we know that this is a, 60, a velocity 60 goal. And what did it actually achieve? The second to last line says 91.52. So we wanted to achieve a velocity of 60. We got a 91 velocity. It did so much better than the goal. And notice the PI even indicates that. That's an example of a velocity. If I go up here, let's say to... Um, uh, let's go down here, I guess, to TSO prod period one. We see here that it has a goal. It says percentile goal, because I see at the very bottom line it says percentile. And it says 80%, which is the third line from the bottom. And the goal value is 0.5. So in this case, the goal value is 80% complete within 0.5 seconds. And we see at the top line that the PI that was actually achieved a 0.5. We did better than half the goal value. So we only needed to achieve a 0.5 second response time, and in this case, it actually achieved less than 0.25 second response time. We did so much better than the goal value. And then you can see here the different patterns of activity of how it's read. In, in our product, we like to put this contextual information like I'm showing here. So what do we do and how do we evaluate this measurement? So let's look at that. So what I look for is whether or not a goal is too easy or too hard. I'm going to be honest with you here. I'm not a big fan of constantly evaluating performance indexes. It's a good measurement for workload manager to use because workload manager does it every 10 seconds. But when looking at it on a 15 minute basis, it becomes a less meaningful measurement. But we can still use it. And how can we still use it? Well, First of all, you can use it on a regular basis if you want to put it on your monitors on the wall to say whether or not the goal is being met or missed. But that's under the assumption your goal is a good goal. And so you can do that. What I mostly use the performance index for on a uh, report like this based on the SMF72 record is to help me understand whether or not goals are too easy or too hard. So looking at it from a heat chart point of view, if we look at the very bottom two workloads here, STC high CC and JRK HHCL, whatever these are, look at all the speckling that's going on. Sometimes the goal is met, sometimes the goal is missed. Sometimes the goal is met very easily, sometimes the goal is missed by a lot. Believe it or not, it's that speckling you want to see because that means that WM is constantly going to be paying attention to the workloads. The more interesting pattern you want to make sure you pay attention to is solid red, meaning we're constantly missing the goal, or 
solid blue in this case, which means we're constantly easily meeting the goal value. So take, for example, this NE workload here, which is constantly red. We see it's a percentile goal, 90% to complete within 0.25 second. And we see the first line there says that it's constantly getting a PI of six. It's missing the goal by six times the amount. Every time it runs, it's missing the goal by that much. This shows us that this goal is just too difficult. And I'll go through this in other videos, but you don't want to have goals that are too difficult by, for Workload Manager because many times Workload Manager won't even help the work if the work is just too difficult to even improve a little bit. So don't make them too difficult. Watch out for those constant missing of PIs by quite a lot. That's a bad pattern of activity. Another not so good pattern of activity is the constant blue, the light blue, which means the goal is always being easily met. If it's easily being met, what's the problem? The problem is, is that if the goal is too easy, it could be good because that's what you want the goal to be, but if it's too easy, what happens is WM is never really helping it. Now you might say, Peter, isn't that okay that if the goal is really easily being met and WM doesn't help it, everybody's happy? And the answer to that question is, it's true. Under the assumption it's an accurate goal, it's a goal you really want for that workload. But chances are what happens is as you go on faster and faster CPUs, as you improve performance of the workloads and the resources, the goal becomes too easy. And the problem with a goal that is too easy is that many times workload manager of course doesn't help it. Why? Because it doesn't have to help it. It's easily meeting the goal. But it also means that workload manager can be stealing from this workload, lowering things like the CPU dispatch and priority, taking away its storage, still meeting its goal value, but taking away resources. And what happens then is now you have a workload that's very vulnerable, that if you have a performance problem in the future, that workload manager may not help this workload and this workload lands up getting hurt. Now another pattern of activity I would recommend you look at is pay more attention to importance level 1, 2, and 3 workloads and less at the lower importance workloads. Here I have a workload called DDF period 1 and importance level 5 which has a velocity goal of 30. It's easily meeting that velocity goal. It's importance level 5, easily meeting its goal value. It makes it easy for WLM to steal from. That's good. It's a low importance workload. It's the high importance workloads we want to pay more attention to. So that's how to read a heat chart for performance index. So that's it from me, Peter Enrico, talking about workload manager performance indexes on the ZOS operating system. So join me for future videos where I will be talking more about workload manager and other areas of the ZOS operating system, mainframe performance, mainframe fundamentals, mainframe concepts. Thank you, and I will see you in a future video. Peter Enrico, out.